Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this video, I'm going to show you how to easily stack sections when a user scrolls down the page. Here's what we're going to be pulling off in this tutorial. I wanted to have it where when you scroll down, you can see right here, this part gets sticky. And then I wanted to also have each one of these uh, call to action sections to stack on top of each other. So each one of these are individual intersections. And I wanted to make this tutorial to show you how easy it is to actually stack these all using just Elementor Pro. The good news is you won't need to do any sort of additional JavaScript coding or CSS or anything like that. This is all built into Elementor Pro. So you will need to make sure that you have an Elementor Pro license. And if you wanna help support this channel, we do have an affiliate link in the description below. So if you haven't purchased Elementor Pro, uh, you could just use the affiliate link and we get a small commission if you purchase Elementor Pro. Now let's just jump right into the tutorial. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to pull this off right here. Here we are in the back end of the web page, and as you can see on the right side right here, I have this navigator open. So this is gonna make it where you can visually see what's going on, on the page. So I'm gonna walk you through how this is uh, set up and then the settings you need to enable to make sure this all stays sticky. So let's just go ahead and I'm gonna click each section and show you how this was built out. So the very first section is this right here. So this right here is the blue. And then everything that is sticky is within one big section right here. So where my mouse is, the big section goes all the way down to here. And so right here, when I select a sticky section, you can see when I scroll down, it is the whole height of this container with all of those intersections. So that's what's going on here. We have one big column right here, and then each one of these is an intersection. So when I click here, you can see it's gonna highlight what is considered the section. So this right here, web design, is this section. E-commerce is this section right here. And if you aren't too familiar with how intersections work, uh, I recommend just checking out their documentation right here on how intersections work. Uh, they have a good video here and some documentation just so you can kind of understand how intersections work. So that's gonna keep this video tutorial a little bit shorter, is that you need to kind of understand how intersections uh, work on the back end. Once you have your page laid out with all your intersections, uh, it's very easy to just go ahead and enable a few settings on each one, and then it's gonna easily just stack on top of each other. So let's go ahead into the very first intersection right here, and that is this section right here, uh, how can we help, I'm looking for. So what I did is when you go under advanced, everything that we're gonna be doing in this tutorial uh, moving forward is probably just gonna be in the advanced section right here. So what you need to do is make sure that you set your Z indexes first on all of your sections. So in this case, we wanna make sure that this is zero. This one right here is a one, two, and a three. That way that every time you scroll up, this is gonna overlap on top of that one. So without setting up your Z indexing uh, in the beginning, it's not gonna work. So you can just go ahead into each section and you can see right here, branding, I have the Z index at one. Web design, I have it at two. And then e-commerce at three. So you just wanna make sure that you stack them the way that you need them. Now the next section is where all the magic is gonna happen and that's under motion effects. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have this at top. And so when you scroll down, you're gonna see it gets sticky to the top. And if you haven't messed around with this too much, it's very easy to understand. The way it works is you can stick to the top of the bottom. So in this case, we wanna to stick to the top. And then I have this offset of 20. So by default, it's zero. So if you look, it's gonna get locked to the very top. I usually like to have a little bit of space so it doesn't bump up to the top of the browser window here. So that's what the offset of 20 does. And then this right here is basically where all of the magic is happening. You gotta make sure that you click this stay in column because if you don't have that enabled, let me show you what happens. It's gonna make it where that just stays sticky to the top of the website forever. So you're gonna see it came through right here um, that's because this was a Z index of zero. Um, but let me go ahead into another section and show you if you don't enable that, that it basically is not gonna work the way you want. So the branding section right here, if you don't have state in column, this is what's gonna happen. It's just gonna keep going down the page. So what that stay in column does is, if you remember when we set this up right here, all of these intersections are within one big column right here. So when the user scrolls all the way to the bottom of that column, which is right here, you see where my mouse is uh, highlighting that blue, that's the end of the column. So if you don't have that enabled uh, called staying column, it's just gonna keep going. 
So all of these other ones are stopping exactly at the end right here. So we just need to go ahead into here and make sure that they all are staying column. So that's about all there is to set this up correctly. So let me just quickly go through each one. So branding has the Z index of one, top, staying column, and then I have that offset 100. So if you look right here, if I have that at zero, which was default, it's gonna overlap that one right there. So you're gonna to have to always think about if there's stuff above it, you wanna make sure that the offset is gonna be offset that. So this is 100 pixels from the very top of the browser. So it takes into consideration this 20 plus more. So you can see right here that when you scroll down, it's 100 pixels off from the browser right here. And you just set that up exactly the same way with all the other ones, and then they're just stacked on top of each other. And here's the web design intersection. You can see I have it at Z index of two. This one is at one, so it's gonna overlap it. And then we have the offset at 100, stay in column. So you can see right here, it sticks. And then just like the last one, you just do Z index of three, and we have top 100 and stay in column. So like I said, if you start to run into issues where these things aren't stopping at the end of your column, just make sure that this is clicked on. It's really easy to forget to click that on and then it gets all uh, out of whack. And that's really about it on how that works on the desktop. So if you want, you can just preview this. Let me show you how it looks on the front end. Here we are on the front end of the website. When I scroll down, we have it sticky at 20. Each one of these is gonna be top sticky at 100 and then overlaps, overlaps, and then they all are staying in the column. So when you scroll down, you're not gonna see anything coming through on the bottom here. And the cool thing about this effect is that you can easily uh, turn it on and off for mobile devices if you want. So if you have a situation where it just isn't gonna stack very well on mobile, you can disable that. So let's see how it looks on mobile. So if I scroll down, I have it set right here at the 20 sticky top. And so 100 right here might be a bit much. So what I can do is, so if you look right here, I have padding on that section. And as soon as I remove that, it's gonna bump up a lot closer. So this looks pretty good on mobile. So you can go here, sticky. So same thing, let's go here and remove that, make it 20 or so. And then what you can also do here is you can flip it. So reverse columns on mobile. So make sure that the image is on the top so it sticks. And then same thing here, we can go to this intersection, make sure that that is at 20. So as you can see, this effect works pretty good on this use case right here. And then that's just gonna keep scrolling past. So that works out pretty good. Now let's go ahead and say you don't want this on mobile. You can easily just go ahead and disable it so it doesn't uh, have any sort of sticky effects at all. So you can go to each one of these and under motion effects, you can just unclick where it says sticky. So now you're gonna see the user can just scroll. So we just need to go to each intersection and just turn that off. So let's do that. Turn that off, web design, turn off mobile and e-commerce. And there you go. You can easily see that when you turn that off, it just turns into kind of like a regular website scroll. So that's how you can change it up on mobile. Um, and like I said, play around with it and actually try it on your mobile device because sometimes I've noticed that the experience in the browser, uh, on the back end, and the front end of the website on desktop could be a little bit different on a, a physical mobile device. So just go onto your mobile device and just make sure that it functions correctly. And that's it for this Elementor tutorial. Make sure you give it a like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.